What's up, everybody? I know it's been a while since our last update video on this thing, but uh, we definitely have some stuff to show you today. Um, well, from the last video, as you can tell, we actually have a body on this thing, some fenders, and uh, more cage than it had. If you want to take a look around, I'll do a quick overview and then give you some detail on stuff. Come to the front of this thing, got our shocks mounted. This angle iron right here this is where our front battery box is going to go i'll show you the battery box in a little bit we got our electric power steering pci or not pci my bad uh odyssey 925 fuse block what else is up here i think that's about in here go to the inside of the car we got our rear battery box tray i don't know if you can see in there BMS and also the VCU is going down underneath the back seat. This is going to be our heater blower motor And if you look at the dash, we got our screen mounted and also that's a BMW Control knob so we're making a custom uh, Custom center dash mount whatever you want to call it When you come to the rear of the car This is how far back the battery box had to protrude to the back of the car. We had to cut the whole rear firewall out and uh, yeah, get this thing as far back to the grills as possible. This is an inverter, right Kyle? Charger. Charger, a part of the charging system. And then also there's some contactors and a couple other things I'll let Kyle explain. It's a general overview, freaking shout out to Live Action P for color matching our uh, fiberglass fenders. These things look like steel on here. And then, uh, yeah, I'll hand it off to Kyle to give you a little overview of some stuff he's got going on over here. Uh, so far, we've got uh, the car mostly wired. Uh, the, the high voltage side of it is mostly wired. What we ended up doing is we, we got this um, this material here. This is an example of it. Uh, this orange stuff, it's like it's plastic coated on the inside and the outside. And it has a metal sheath in there. So this is actually like really rigid and, and, uh, and tough. We ran three lengths of that down in the tunnel. So there's that, they go all the way through to the front of the car. Uh, it's outside of the passenger compartment. And this way we know that our high voltage cables are first off, they already have a double layer of, um, of, uh, of, of their own uh, rubber material. Then it has this, uh, this corrugated plastic. And then those ride inside the internal metal sheath uh, PVC uh, tunnels that are tubes that go down through the tunnel so that we know that in there there should never be any way that that isolation is going to break that they're going to arc against the car or arc against themselves it's that that's that's part of the method of how we made sure that as the years go by and this car goes to the desert or whatever we know that there won't be a problem with uh, any sort of arcing inside of the vehicle or any sort of loss of isolation so this, this cable uh, will be connecting to the front part of the front battery ba box. This one will be going to the rear, and that's all part of how we're going to complete our circuit. Um, this, this other orange is uh, for our charger, and we were able to fit it in the, uh, in the factory gas fill location so that we you believe we'll pull up to a standard electric car charging uh, station and plug it in just where you, you should... Uh, you know, you get your energy in the same spot, whether it's gas or electric in this car. So we will fit in the same door. So yeah, it, it's just a method of making sure that everything uh, stays protected through the car to the back. Um, so in the back, that's where we're gonna have six batteries. This is a charger and a DC to DC converter. So these cables come from the front. Uh, they're, they're fed from that, from that fuel door. And this right here is gonna be our contactor box that we're working on today. So what you have uh, on an electric car is you have uh, high voltage contactors. They're just big relays. That's all they are. But the, the, the idea is that, you know, you never want to have to touch high voltage or be exposed to it. So um, it will be contained inside of this plastic box. And we will drive those contactors with low voltage, 12 volt, that will come out to uh, our BMS and that will be inside the car. That's what your key actually operates. So uh, it's just a way of like keeping all of the, uh, you know, 400 volt high voltage power completely isolated from people at all times. You do it with a 12 volt relay system. So this is our custom contactor box we're putting together with a pre-charged circuit. And this is a current sensor and volt sensor with the VCU 
we'll take into account. The other side will calculate uh, miles left to empty and things like that. This is our front battery box. We only put one of the front the batteries in just for the display, but another one goes here and another one on top. Um, Tim fabbed this up. It's 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 really cool. It has all the angle in there and on the actual uh, lid and front plate there are features that when it when it is assembled and it's screwed together it holds the batteries uh, in every dimension so that they can't get loose or or get wild in there. So we have nine Chevy Bolt uh, modules. Uh, which is like it's a little under 400 volts when they're all fully charged uh, it's like 50 something kilowatts kilowatt hours 54 I think off the top of my head I forget so hopefully we get three miles per kilowatt this car might get 150 miles range maybe we'll see it could do better you know maybe, maybe it'll get over 150 closer to 200 but yeah we'll see what it gets I would say I know another question everybody's asking is if it's going to be a race car or play car. There's going to be a play car in Idaho, actually. Um, it'll probably never see a racetrack, and uh, the guy definitely should have some fun in the hills of Idaho, though. All right, so we've got the tire taken off. I know a lot of you guys haven't really seen what's going on with the suspension since the last video as well. Obviously, we have the Tesla small drive unit mounted up in there. You can kind of see the front mount up there. And there's also another mount similar to that on the rear. Um, if we start from the outside working in, we got some nice mobile wagon, five lug wheels. Um, working our way in, we got two piston wheel woods. This is actually Impy's um, freaking micro stub kit with a suspensions unlimited plus one arm. So this is the same arm you would put on a 516 or a 1600 car. Sway away spring plates. And working our way in, these are actually 2.5 by 14 King uh, remote reservoir shocks. And while we were at it, we also got the brakes plumbed up as well. Custom lines, front and rear. And then, uh, Kyle, uh, you wanna explain to them what is inside the actual motor that helps it drive? So they call it a small drive unit. Uh, there's, there's basically two sizes for the Model S and Model X. You have a large drive unit and a small drive unit. The large drive unit always goes in the rear of a car, but if you had like a Model S or a Model X that was all wheel drive, it would get a small drive unit in the front. So in our case, we're, we're putting it in the back and it works for a few different reasons because the inverter and the motor on a small drive unit is actually, it's designed to be behind the, 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 the output shaft, which is perfect for a Volkswagen. So that's why they're really popular. Inside here, you have an inverter and a motor. And the motor goes through two uh, gear reduction stages and then comes out at the at the CV shafts. It's uh, it's single speed. It doesn't shift, but there are a couple of gears in there, and it's got a, it's been opened up and a posi traction was installed. So this thing will do sweet burnouts and donuts. Yeah, thank you. Up front, this is just the rest of the brake system. We got plumbed in, kind of hard to tell with the. Um, this is all just stainless steel with AN aluminum fittings on the end. All right, what's up everybody? Just wanted to give you a little in detail look from a driver's perspective here. Uh, when it comes down to the pedal assemblies down there, we utilized a Volkswagen master cylinder and also the brake pedal, which we used a Chevy Silverado brake pad for. This is a ETC unit, electric throttle control. It'll talk to the motor. Right here, we're in the middle of building a custom center console. This is a BMW control unit right here which will talk to the screen and the radio right here at the bottom we're going to be putting a standard ignition key and ignition and what this does is it'll turn on the car just like a regular car so you're going to need the key and there should be some uh, touch screen uh, uses on this guy but we'll be able to show you in depth and more about that once we get power to the unit all right hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, that was as much as we could think of to show you guys on this one if there's any questions or anything you want us to go into a little more detail about make sure to drop a comment and we'll get to it on the next video